Believe it or not, this is going to be a knife video. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a knife. I first saw it in the 2018 SHOT Show. It's the First Edge Stingray. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. First, I'd like to say a big thank you to the folks at ClickBelt for sponsoring today's video. My ClickBelt 2-ply tactical belt has been my everyday concealed carry belt for almost the last three years. It's absolutely, in my opinion, the best and easiest to use cover buckle belt on the market. And if you've seen any of the past videos, you may know that right now the score is ClickBelt 3 Ford Bronco 0. You, you have to check those out to see what I mean. Click belts are available in a wide variety of styles and colors, all of them featuring genuine Austria Alpine Cobra buckles and a full lifetime warranty. So if you're looking for a good looking, easy to use and very strong concealed carry belt, I highly recommend checking out the folks at Click Belt. And be sure and tell them thanks for sponsoring Survival on Purpose. So the folks at First Edge Knives were kind enough to send me, um, gosh, over a year ago, um, one of their First Edge Stingray knives. When I first saw this, um, well, actually at SHOT Show 2018, and they sent it to me soon after along with the hatchet. We've done a review on the hatchet. Uh, I actually had misplaced this. I just found it recently, so I thought, well, since they were kind enough to send it, I need to do a review on it. And I really like this little knife. It's a, kind of a departure. Most of their stuff has been really big stuff. This is a small one. Got some really cool features. Comes in several different colors. This is the blue one. And so I'm going to take you down to the old stump top in just a minute and talk about the specs of this thing and talk about the, uh, and just kind of do some knife stuff. Before we do that, let me give you a couple of my first impressions about this and some things that really stood out to me. So first of all, um, let's talk about the, uh, oh, did I cut myself? I almost did. This knife, I really like the way it's made. It's got a, a nice little finger guard there. And if, you, if you'll see this, if you can see this, it's kind of, it's, it's got a nice rounded little knob there. So it's, it's, it's big enough to really keep you from cutting yourself, <laughs> which is kind of what it's there for. And it just gives you a little, little, I don't know. I like it. I just like it. It gives you kind of a, something that's where it's really easy on your, on your finger. If you do slip over, it's not sharp at all. Again, this is L max steel, full tang, uh, G 10 handles, like all the, all the uh, other first edge stuff. Got a little lanyard hole there, but this thing is just, it is a sweet, sweet little knife. It feels really, really good in your hand. And then, the sheath it comes with is, in my mind, both a pro and a con. Just for normal carry, this is a very nice sheath. Is there? It's their uh, pancake style Kydex and nylon sheath, and it's just a very, very solid. Got a nice strap here, nice snap up here. Big, big uh, opening here for a belt. Uh, just super solid. Very, very nice sheath. This one does not have the metal insert that they put in like their Navy SEAL sheaths, but it's got some lashing parts, parts here. These can come off. You can put this on a pack or whatever, but it's just a really very well-made sheath, which is great for just belt carrier or whatever. But I have to say something really striking, and it's got, a, by the way, little serrations here to thumb push, push this thing off. But what I'd really like to see for this knife is some kind of in the waistband, a very minimalist sheath because uh, I know it's not designed for that, but I think this would be a very good defensive knife because of, of the, the the big finger guard here and the smoothness there and the way it fits your hand really good. And it is, by golly, can you just see that? It is sharp, sharp, pointy, sticky. I think if you had to defend yourself with it, it's going to be good. Um, you're not going to have a big chance of cutting yourself with it. You're, it's not going to slide up even if your hands were wet with blood or anything else. I think it could be a really good fighting knife like that now that's by the way coming from somebody who knows nothing about knife fighting okay but either way it just it, it would keep your it protects your hand from from sliding up which and it feels really good in your hand and it's small enough where you could you could uh you could just use it like a like you're hitting somebody with a fist or whatever so anyway that being said i admittedly i know nothing about knife fighting but i do think this could be a really good defensive knife because um, it is sharp, sharp, sharp. This LMAX steel holds an edge. That being said, now let's take you down to the old stump top and, and we'll do uh, talk about the specs of this thing. We'll do some regular old knife stuff. As opposed to the scientific stuff we do at the balance orientation rotation device, which I'm probably not going to be able to resist. Okay, so here we are. The Stingray. Which I think is a very, very apt 
apt name for it. This knife has an overall length of 6.75 inches with a blade length of 3.25 inches. It's 1.32 inches thick, which is just over an eighth of an inch, and it weighs just 5.6 ounces. Again, it's a full tang blade of LMAX steel with a Rockwell hardness of 60 to 61. Features coarse finish G10 handles. There's a nice little detail there on the um kind of almost like jimping on the handles with just some, some steps cut in it. It's available in four colors, and the blade is available in either black oxide, as this one is, or bead blasted, and it's a very smooth finish too. It's not that rough finish that you normally see. And the MSRP on this thing, the retail on this thing, is somewhere around 135 depending on which color, which finish, or whatever, within, within five bucks either way. So there's that. So what I thought we'd do now is just do a little knife stuff. We're not going to do any batoning with this. I don't have any animals to skin, although I think this would probably be a really good skinning knife, um, a caping knife and all, all that kind of stuff. But um, we're going to do the same kind of standard test we do with everything on this. So we've got an index card here. Let's just do a little cut in here. Now, I know that's not a newspaper. It's not the same as a newspaper, but it's pretty stinking sharp how you, how you peg it. So we can certainly do the redneck sharp test. <laughs> oh my gosh. Would you look at that? Would you just look at it? That sucker is sharp. Okay. So we've established that it is sharp. So um, I think we're going to try to cut <coughs> a little feather. You know what? I know it's small, but since I do have this piece of wood here that I believe is... Um, I need to get to the middle level and try to make a feather. We'll go ahead and do a little little mini baton with it. That, I know that's ridiculous, but we'll do it anyway because I've never been accused of not being ridiculous. We'll do it from this side so maybe you can see a little better. I don't want to readjust the camera just for this. Okay, and we'll do one more. Try to get down to some dry wood on the inside here because it's been raining here in Georgia for about the last 12 years, it feels like. So, all right, so we'll try that. Maybe, um, you can see, kind of does kind of get the finish a little dirty there, but that's what happens when you use them, right? So, let's just see if we can give it some feathers here. Get you out of the way now. Of course we can carve curls with it, feathers, whatever you want to call them, because it is sharp. Really, really, really sharp. I think I'm going to split this one more time. Let's see if we can do it like this, old school. Alright, maybe we'll beat it through there. Put it on the edge. Okay, trying to get to a little sharper edge because to make these feathers better. Curls or whatever you want to call them. I call them feathers. Okay, that was a little on the wet side there. Let's try to find some dry out here. It's gonna make some. That should be good. Let's see. Now it's been raining, like I said. This is the non fat wood test here. And I've got the uh, ExoTac. I think this is, I don't know what it is, Nano Striker. Yeah, Nano Striker here. Go ahead and um, take that off. We we'll use the. You know me, I got, a, I got a striker right here on it, right? But I got to use, I've got to use the back of this blade, see if it'll strike a ferro rod before we do anything else. And it's not great. And I didn't think it would be because the other first edge I have aren't. So we'll just try it like this. We'll use the Nano Striker. I 
And like I said, it's been raining pretty hard here. So, <laughs> we got some fatwood here. Now, I've got the old fatwood that's been laying out here in the yard for, for four or five years. We're going to go ahead and, um, actually, I think for about four and a half years, it's been laying out here in the yard. But I got, this is the Home Depot fire, fatwood that we bought. Did a test on a few months, a couple of months ago. It's been laying out in the rain now for a couple of months. So, we're going to try it and see, see, see if she'll work, if it'll work. Because I know the other one that's been in the yard will work. So we get a little a little extra bonus bonus follow-up testing here on the Home Depot fatwood. And I don't think it'll scrape the back of it's gonna scrape very well either. Well it scrapes better than it strikes a ferro rod. That little bit of stuff there will help get the fire going though. So not too bad on that. It's not striking a ferro rod really well. But let's see what we got here now. Finally. So there is that. Okay, well that's some of the real world testing for the first stage Stingray. Um, but as you know, here at Survival on Purpose Worldwide Headquarters, we maintain a state-of-the-art cutting-edge knife testing facility. And one of the uh, testing um, stations I like to put all the fixed blade knives through is the uh, balance orientation and rotation device right here. So um, we're going to take we're going to do that right now. And this thing has got a very pointy little tip on it. So hopefully we're going to be okay. Uh, Calibration is always critical. This, but hopefully I've got it. So let's just see what happens. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna call this one balance. Gotta say, I like this little knife. I really like that little thing there. I don't even know why, I just like it. I think this is a great little knife for um, any kind of fine task. It is sharp. Like I said, although I admittedly know nothing at all about knife fighting or defensive use of a knife, uh, combatives or whatever you wanna call it, I think this would be a pretty good choice to have just as a backup defensive weapon. Um, but it's also just a really great tool. I think it'd be a great skinning knife. I know a little, very little about that also, but it just seems like it would be. It's got a nice grade to it, curve to it, and just a, a great all-around knife. And plus, I just I think it's a cool knife. I really like the looks of it. But like I said, this is available on Amazon at the time of this video for somewhere in the neighborhood of 130 bucks, 135 bucks. So. Uh, for L Max steel, I think that's a pretty good deal. So, if you're looking for a really cool little knife, you might want to check out the Stingray from the folks at First Edge. And if you're looking for some really cool deals on all kinds of cool gear, be sure and check out the folks at Sportsman's Guide. Don't miss the clearance section on their website. They've got some really great deals there. I think that's where I bought this shirt from, like m several years ago. So, I'll put a link in the description below to Sportsman's Guide, and I'll try to put one right up here. Uh, hopefully, it's been helpful. As always, thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a brand new video every Friday and Saturday and very often random videos throughout the week. There's another one right there. If you're not subscribed, please click right down there in the corner. Click that subscribe button and that little notification bell so you don't miss a single video. I really appreciate the support. Once again, my name's Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time.